Welcome to the November 20th, 2023 meeting of the Design Review Committee. I'd like to call this meeting to order. The DRC is the Subcommittee of Historic Zoning. The meeting is informal and designed to guide applicants through the process of obtaining a Certificate of Appropriateness, or COA, for projects within the city's historic districts in light of the historic district design guidelines. Applicant participation in DRC meetings is voluntary but highly recommended. Changes made or suggestions taken by the applicant based on discussions with the DRC are the applicant's choice, but the DRC makes no representation as to whether any changes or suggestions made during the meeting will be approved by the voting body, which is the Historic Zoning Commission. There are eight items on the afternoon's agenda. When each item is called, please introduce yourself and generally describe your item in about two to three minutes. The first item is discussion of alterations at 230 Franklin Road, Building 11. Building 11. And make sure you, the button's on so the green light will come on. Bingo. Good afternoon. My name is Victor Lecoff. I work for Anecdote Architectural Experiences, and I will be the owner representative for the Sapphire Restaurant. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so in this presentation, we are proposing a few items on the exterior improvements. This is the site and where the restaurant is located in Building 11. And then on the next page, the list of the exterior improvement we are proposing. And so item A uh, is the storefront replacement um, that you can see. Uh, it's a little hard to see on this picture, but on the next, one, next slide, you will see that there is an existing clear anodized um, storefront system that we are uh, proposing to change and instead incorporating a salvage uh, existing window from the factory uh, that was salvaged by the landlord holiday properties as well as incorporating a new wall with also salvage brick from the factory uh, and so in the intent to sort of create a symmetry of what is happening on the left side we are essentially recreating that on the right side instead of um, what is currently there moving on to item b um, this is related to sort of the backdrop of the front facade of building 11 you can see some silver awnings uh, that are existing what we're proposing is to replace them uh, with something similar to what you see on the front facade. Um, and it is fabricated of C steel, C-channel. Um, if you go on the next slide, you can see that's another view from further away. Uh, it's sort of tying those two facades together a little bit better than, than what's <laughs> there. Uh, and on the next slide, it's sort of go over how it's fabricated uh, and so you can see the structure is made out of steel angle, steel C channel, and you have uh, the roof made out of corrugated uh, roof panel. And so this is what we would be using uh, to replace the silver awnings. Item C is not on the front facade, that is the side facade. Uh, so it's it's a little less visible, but what we're proposing is to replace this existing storefront door with a double steel fabricated door. Um, and Holiday, the landlord, has been uh, replacing some of their door with this exact product that we're showing on the right image. And so we would want to match what they've used so far. Um, and on the slide after that, um, the, the landlord had shared with us that sometimes when they do replace uh, existing opening 
within an existing window, <coughs> the actual window itself is not strong enough to hold on to that uh, new opening. And so what they've had to do in some occasion was to replace whatever is above this modified opening. And so on this slide, you, you can see it's, it's, it would be still very close to what's there, except that it would just be a new um, upper window system that would match what uh, the existing mullion design uh, is currently there. It would just be a, a steel fabricated uh, window system. Next item is the proposal of adding three new skylights over the restaurant. And here the intent is to sort of match the existing skylight that exists over the main hall. Uh, the design will be very similar uh, and sort of tied back to the original design. Um, and this is a view from the parking lot um, where you can barely tell that there is skylight, but the intent here would be to match um, the one above the main home. Another view from further. Still looking at the new skylight. And then the last item is um, this will be sort of the back of house of the restaurant. What we're proposing is removing that existing awning. Uh, and that big window under that awning is uh, the private dining area. And so the intent here is to uh, bring a lot more daylight in that space. And so that's, that is our proposed design. And I believe that should wrap up the presentation. Okay, Emily or Kelly, who? So, um, just to go over, so the storefront replacement of the window here, um, the guidelines would recommend to maintain historic windows and historic window openings. So while the current window appears to not be historic, um, the guidelines would recommend to keep that opening and not fill it in with a salvaged window and salvaged brick. Um, let's see, for the awning, um, the guidelines would support um, replacing the silver awnings to match uh, the reddish brown color awnings that is seen elsewhere on the factory. Then for the patio door, um, the guidelines would recommend the same to uh, utilize um, the existing windows and uh, to not replace those if at all possible. Several months ago, this uh, not this application, but another application came forth where um, the windows above the door had to be replaced just because they were not they could not structurally support new steel fabricated doors. And so our guidelines would recommend to um, keep those if possible. Then moving on to the skylights, uh, the guidelines do recommend uh, that skylines should be positioned so that they are not visible from the street. I know um, several um, conversations ago, some of the um, utilities on the roof are going to be removed. And so that is a positive, but adding these um, skylights to the roof don't exactly meet the guidelines. Then finally, this awning removal is appropriate within the guidelines and would be supported to be removed. Thanks. Okay. Who wants to start? Kathy. <clears throat> Emily, the first comment you made about the window 
that they're wanting to replace with existing, that's not recommended by the guidelines? If we consulted a historic photo, I believe, um, from their website, uh, on the factory website, and it appears that the historic photo of the building... Um, Shares that aluminum. Well, it shows that it has the same opening and it wasn't a historically just a window. It was just a full opening, kind of like how it is in this photo. Zoom in for us. How mm -hmm. it's, I guess, if you could say floor to ceiling window. Mm -hmm. And so creating a, a brick knee wall and a historic window, while those are appropriate materials to use for this, it's just not appropriate in this instance to maintain the, okay. so, the solid to void. So their proposal would not be supported by our guidelines. Yes, ma'am. Okay. My comment to that is I think it would be supported based on the other windows that we've approved on the front facade of that entire front facade. So I think what you've done is very appropriate for that window. Any other comments on that window? I would Susan? be, yeah, I would be more inclined to support staff's comments on that one. Support it. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I, the thing is, is that <clears throat> we're, we're, we don't want to create this false sense of history. And so we want this to be as close to the original as possible. Brian? So <clears throat> configuring that like the ones down to the, the left. Yes, that would be more appropriate to maintain the large um, glass would be appropriate. It appears that if this is the window, I don't know why this is a blue highlight, something I've done. Anyway, um, it appears that this window right here is non-historic. I would have to go out and verify that, but it appears that it is non-historic. So it, it'd be suggested a pattern of um, windows to be utilized um, in replacement of this if that is being proposed. So keep it? Okay. You're saying keep it is what you're saying. The, from, keep I, I, the floor to ceiling opening and not fill it in with brick at the bottom. So configure it like the other we've approved, which would be the glass coming all the way down. It gets you to the same place. It just doesn't have the brick at the bottom. Can I, can I add to this yes. point? Yes. Please, oh, okay, do. Okay. Please, please yes. do. So the reason why we're sort of doing this is because the existing window that we have access to uh, essentially the exact same that you can see above and so they don't go from floor to ceiling and so if we were to do an opening that is from floor to ceiling like staff is proposing we would have to incorporate a new window that is not from the factory and so our point was to be to salvage what we had uh, by using the salvage brick and the salvage window I, I could support that. Yeah. I, I mean, I Are you think widening the opening? I, no. You, you're okay. not. You're not. Yeah. All right. I, I could support that as well. I, I, I think it's appealing mm -hmm. to use an existing salvage window from the factory. Mm -hmm. The space had already been muddled, I mean, with the uh, aluminum bars that you see on that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this would be an improvement. Okay. The other comment is you have existing windows that are exactly the same panes and mm -hmm. sizing right around the corner That's as right. well. Uh, okay, well, let's go Let's go to the new awnings then that you want to put in. Has anybody got any comments on those, that next piece? Staff approves that. Staff approves that. Staff approves that. You, you good with that? Okay. I think we're... Not hearing anything. I think we're good. 
mm-hmm. on those. Uh, and then let's go to the, I guess that's the same one on uh, the patio door. Let's, let's talk about that. So the guidelines would recommend to keep the historic um, windows up in the, above the door. Um, an application came before the Historic Zoning Commission a couple months ago, and uh, I believe that the windows had already been removed, and so it, the commission had to act and vote to have the steel system above because there was no other option. It was just a hole. And so the guidelines would recommend to keep these historic windows. But what about the structure above? That's above those doors to add if you needed structural support. The guidelines would not support that. Okay. I'd ask the applicant, is the, what is driving wanting the double doors? Um, for the use of the restaurant, it would be very hard to service. Um, one one the, door. With one, one door. Yeah. It's a very large um, patio area. And there is, I believe, right around 60 seats. And so obviously for a, a single door and being able to service that, that patio, it would be very, very difficult. Um, but on top of that, what is existing is... Um, is not historic. Like that, that single door is um, has been installed recently, and doesn't really right goes ties well with the factory. And and I think the staff doesn't have a problem with removing the door. Right. It's cutting out brick and right. And just to be clear, the intent here is not to touch whatever is above that double door. It's mm-hmm. the point of having that second slide is in case there is a need uh, to replace what's above, then yes, we would have to replace it with a steel fabricated window system. Well, this is an adaptive reuse. Yes. <laughs> so. One of my questions is, too, about the double door, not just from a use aspect, but from egress. Mm -hmm. You're changing the use of this space. And so do you need double doors for egress, life safety? We do not. You do not. Okay. So you could go back with a single door? Could. You could. But but it's not practical to do that. It is not. It's not at all. (laughs) I, I get that. All right. Other, Susan, you got any thoughts? I, I understand your concerns, and uh, I would support changing it to a double door. I would yeah, do I, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Yeah, that's a good solution. Okay. Yeah, I don't have I don't, a Yeah, I don't have And the amount of brick that you're going to cut out is minimal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and well, it does. And, I, I think it it's going to be great. And I th- again, looking ahead to what you're planning to do with that patio, I think it's, I mean, this makes perfect sense. And it balances out that center section. Exactly right. You're, that's and exactly right. Good what's point. there isn't so glorious <laughs> if, <laughs> right. if you're looking at the two pictures. Right. And let's see, you're looking right out at the water tower too, I believe, mm-hmm. through those you doors. Are. Yes. So. Okay, let's move on to the, um, anybody else on the doors? Otherwise, let's move on to the skylights. Any question on that? Okay, hearing silence, we'll move on to the... Oh, wait a minute. Emily, you mentioned that some of the um, HVAC or the utilities are going to be removed from there as well. So those eyesores are going away? Um, I believe that some of the HVAC units are going away. Um, I don't know if it is these two that we are seeing right here, but I know previous conversations, they, some are being removed from the roof. I would ask to see, like, are you replacing roof? You know, how does that affect what you're going to replace? If you're pen- making po- more penetrations with skylights, where does it affect what's being removed? Maybe investigate that a little bit. Um, they're low profile. They're not very obtrusive. 
I guess just more information on it would help. Yeah, I would say bring an actual skylight. I'm not a huge fan of it just because I think if everybody starts doing it all the way around the building, mm -hmm. which you have to think that way uh, for other it's, people. So I'm not a, a huge real. fan, but if, if we could see. It'll look a lot better than the utilities that are sitting up there now. Uh, yes, absolutely. That's true. And this is on that low shed roof. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right here. So bring a, bring a, a, a sample. Sure. Yes. Okay. You don't have to bring the whole thing. Just <clears throat> So as part of this presentation, I think it's the next slide. It shows sort of how it will be built, or maybe it's before. It's, yes. Yeah, so there you, go. you can see this is a detail then about how much it would protrude from the roof. Um, this is about as low profile as you can mm -hmm. find. Um, the manufacturer is Velux, so it's a it, it's a very good manufacturer for skylights and this is their low profile product um, and you you will have a protrusion of about eight inches beyond the roof finish i think any example that you can bring would be helpful mm -hmm. okay just to sure satisfy uh, okay Let's go on then to the last P, the awning removal. And I'm thinking this is this is to the right of where that new patio door would be, right? It's back in a little tucked in area. That's right. Yes. We we walked that at one of our walkabouts mm -hmm. over there. Um, so anybody got any comment about that? Doesn't look like there's any. <laughs> Architectural beauty there. No. So, I, I don't. If nobody's got anything, I think we're. That's it, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, that's it. I'm good. We're good. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, the next item we had was at 1309 Adams Street, and that's been withdrawn for the moment. So, we'll move on to discussion of relocation and addition accessory structure at 425 Boyd Mill. We've seen these folks before. Yes, we have. Welcome back. Thank or you. welcome to D DRC Thank after you. the site visit. Yes. Most of you were there. Uh, so this is um, addressing, again, the um, accessory structure on the property at 425 Boyd Mill Avenue. And I think um, you've seen the appendixes several times. If we need to bring up um, the Google Maps view, maybe, Emily, just to remind us all of where the structure sits on the property. Uh, <coughs> it is not attached to the primary residence structure. So I just want to be able to provide that aerial view. Uh, and so what's in question is uh, the existing structure had been modified prior to our owning the property, rendering it unusable as a garage. So there is no usable garage on the property. And the site visit, um, we were able to walk through where we would like to relocate the accessory structure, just shift it linearly down the property line um, and be able to add on to that accessory structure to, to provide us with a usable garage. And so you can see the property. This is this, the accessory structure at the back of the property. And if you go, Emily, almost as if you're headed toward that yellow building, <coughs> to the left of the accessory structure. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so you can see the main uh, residence is the gray house, accessory structure behind it. And then if you were facing the accessory structure, to the left of that is a, a wide expanse of open space. There are no trees, there's no fencing, mm -hmm. nothing to remove. And so those of you that were on <coughs> site visit to the property walked that space and kind of walked, stepped through um, the addition that we are proposing. In addition to what you saw on that day, we have since provided a draft rendering of what we're imagining. 
um, sort of intentionally incorporating the architectural elements um, that you all pointed out on the accessory structure. So if we could go, yep, if you scroll right down. This is kind of a close up of what we're thinking. If you zoom in, Emily, on that top left corner. So that would be a view of the accessory structure. What's outlined in red is the moved structure. And then the middle piece would be connecting that <coughs> to the piece on the right, which would be um, a double opening garage, functional garage. Do you want to add to that, please? Yes. Yeah, so we want to activate the original structure. It's already pretty damaged, so we're going to have quite a bit of structural repair to do. This allows us to give it a good solid foundation. And we love the form, so we're, we're mimicking that. But the current width is about 16 or 18 feet wide, so it's not functional for a two-car garage. But when you go to the page previous, you'll notice in the rendering from the street view, that's the existing structure. And then when we come over and have it rendered, we're really trying to maintain that presence at the end of the drive and letting the roofs kind of make it a background building and the little dormer is kind of our connection piece. So with the old existing accessory structure, it's about 15 by 15 usable space inside. The hope is to activate that, make that somewhat of a usable activated space, not just a shed or a garage. And then that would be our access point up to the, to the space above uh -huh. the garage. Do you want to go back to the other renderings that show the architectural elements that you incorporate? Yeah. Yep. So here you can see we're bringing in the corbels and the beams, maintaining that same structure. Uh, we're maintaining the original door, except in this case you can see it open. We're imagining putting that on a barn door type system so that it can shut and look identical to present day. Uh, but when it's in use, it would open, slide over, and then become kind of a, a livable front porch. Maintaining the same material pallets on the new doors, the garage door that we're adding so that we can maintain the, the tight pattern will be a pivot type, not a, a overhead door that we're all familiar with, but more of the historical kind of, it'll raise up and pivot so that we can put the beadboard on that at the diagonals and doing it in a smaller version in the middle garage door. <clears throat> Small dormer on the front, um, and then a little bit larger dormer on the rear so that we really have that story and a half look, um, but maintaining the street elevation. Okay, here we the proposed um, accessory structure does a great job of incorporating the historic accessory structure in its design. Um, like uh, Blake mentioned, the how the addition to the accessory structure, it does read this similar uh, whenever you're looking uh, at it from the street view. It has the same, you know, uh, appearance as the historic accessory structure. And it is, let's see, if the existing footprint of the historic principal building is um, a little over 4,000 square feet, the accessory structure is proposed to be about 1,200 square feet. It is 30.56% uh, of the principal building, which meets the size for the design guidelines. The height is subordinate, and so it does meet the design guidelines for height. Anything else? Okay. So. Uh, so is this a three-car garage then? No. So it would be a two-car garage that's at the end of the driveway access with a section in the middle, but its intent is for lawnmowers, things like that. So it acts as, quote-unquote, the shed so that we can activate the or original structure. Okay. All right. Thank you.
Brian? I think you've done a great job in incorporating the original outbuilding and its design for the house and your new accessory structure. Um, I, I know the talk has been has been made about demol dis dismantling the little accessory structure. What I'd recommend is that that you have someone come out and take a crane and basically just pick it up and just move it. Because my concern about about dismantling is demolition, and once you get a C certificate of occupant certificate of appropriateness for dis dismantling, it's really demolition. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend using a crane or something else to move it instead. Noted. Kathy? I think it's really a good job. Uh, it, 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 I, I particularly like that you've got, when you look at the existing front elevation of the home and then you're showing the um, post renovation, um, it just it grew a little bit bigger. So the same roof pitch and, and everything is there. Is the height the same? The soffit height is the same. So when we make it wider, it will slight the the pitch will make it slightly taller, taller, but we're maintaining the same slopes. Okay. But it's it's minimal. I think it's it's handsome. Good job. Thanks. Mary. Um, do we know what the height is different rental from the house? Not exactly, but we can clarify. I think all that. we would yeah. want to know that. Um, I'm I'm just going to defer to other people. I personally um, don't think it's best preservation practices because I feel like that the original structure is so knitted in to the new structure. The new structure is lovely, but it's so knitted in that um, saying it's a save of that structure to me is a little bit of a stretch, but if the other people see it that way I'm one person so uh, but I do think just as a new structure uh, this fits in to your historic home and the neighborhood if the height is not you know I, I hope it's falling it'll, it'll definitely fall below it's a pretty tall mm -hmm. house uh, but we can clarify that and can we get um y'all's feedback on the doors that they'll be sliding and they may not you know always be closed and they, they might be like how in this larger picture here on the right it might be open can we get y'all's feedback on that uh, i think it's a, a contemporary nod to the historicness of it um i, I don't mind that approach. I think it's handsome either way. Um, I think that's one aspect where you can still differentiate that old part of the, the, the new structure. Uh, you have kicked it out from the footprint of it, so you give it that little nod that it is new. Um, and, and maybe there is another way to give that little notching out where it, that connecting space between mm -hmm. it. But um, I think I think the way you've done the door and the window is handsome. Okay, so the current structure you're going to actually move up and move over, put on a move new up slab, to the yes. house in order to get the depth that you need for a full garage. Correct. Uh, and will you have to take off the the two sides that'll interact with this new structure? Or is that, are they be closed? So the interior of the, the interior. will use, it, the box will create the room within. Okay. And then since it comes forward, uh, our intent is there will be a small addition off of the rear, but that's where we can then incorporate our stair, mm -hmm. but truly use what is now effectively a shed as kind of living a living space. space. And, and you'll still meet the... Um, setback requirements off the correct and side. so on the new part of the garage are you saying the door will open like that correct so there's a some of the original garage doors would pivot and slide oh yes up. 
I've so lived would, with one. <laughs> so have to be I that. might, just for your sanity, see if there is another solution having had one of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the water would fall all over me. Uh, when it did that? Yeah. If you, if you could figure something that would work sure. just as well. That's just, that's not a design thing. It's just a livability. Okay, any other comments, Susan? I do, I wanna piggyback on what Brian and Mary said. And I think that, and I think overall it is a great design, but I'm really concerned that it is knitted into this, into the overall. And so the, the building is really lost in that. And uh, I would encourage you to come up with something where the building still has its integrity. And I think it's losing it in, in the midst of this you know, it's part of a bigger whole, and that's not typically what we like to see with uh, it, it, accessory structures or uh, the primary door. And can I ask, what is pr the proposed rear elevation? What will it uh, look like? It would just be a s simple sloped roof down with a dormer mimicking similar to the front, but it would have the off, like the dormer would offset the face elevation so it would follow the guidelines okay um are there any windows proposed? there will be windows in it, yes. okay um i know that the zoning ordinance does require that like major windows should face inside the property okay. not to face onto neighbors Neighbor property okay. so and i think that's a good that's a good point even for the homeowners because the way they did benelli park the house that's right behind them i mean mm -hmm. it really it really encroaches on their their privacy in the back and i think that the new garage will help as a buffer to what's behind you as well right but it was my understanding it's got a shed with windows on the back is that correct yes but they yeah. could be subordinate windows we could do we could lay the space out to where the primary windows would be at the ends anything else okay thank you uh, I have a question. So, another round? I mean, is that what I'm hearing? I'm not. I'm not understanding whether we're approved to move forward with it. You're, you're not approved. You come. You have to come back for a voting meeting at the Historic Zoning Commission. Right, but you, you, I'm hearing you've gotten some feedback. I've gotten some feedback. Yeah, okay. that's that's where you are right now. Okay. I think that she's asking if if you all would want her to come back to another I, design I, review. I think it's up to you. If you if you feel more comfortable, if you feel unclear about what you're getting here, then I come back to a design review in well, December. Well, what I'm unclear about is two different sets of feedback. Hey, the, yeah. you're not protecting the integrity of this shed, and B, hey, this is a great way to incorporate <laughs> the integrity of the shed. That's two balance. different sets of feedback. I'm sorry. You have to balance it. All right. I, Yep. Uh, I got you. Okay. Yep. That's that's why you got this professional right here. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. <clears throat> All right. We're to the next one. Discussion of demolition at 230 Franklin Road, Building Nine. Ah, oh, nuts. Oh, we got the whole crew. Oh. <laughs> Wow, it's really might as well. Oh, big. Wow. Who's going to? I just want to be prepared. We don't know what okay. questions you're going to we, we tried to find a fifth, but we <laughs> Who's balanced the two sides who's, of the table? Who's going to take the lead? That's the question. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Do we have more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Benton Smothers Holiday Properties representing the factory. Um, the the um, so we're talking about Building Nine. Um, so this is uh, originally built as a pole barn in the mid '30s. So this is you know 85 years plus um, pole barn. Um, really, not much has been done to the structure since it was um, clad and uh, uh, a little bit of work done in the. Uh, 2000, early 2000s, so about 20 something years ago by Calvin Lehu. Um, so yeah, that photo is what uh, Calvin found when he came to it. Um, so, you know, we've kind of gotten to where we're trying to figure out how to use the building. Um, it's in a state that 
it, it doesn't meet code. It's got some deterioration um, from uh, deferred maintenance, but also just from, I think it's outlived its useful life as a pole barn. So we're kind of at this point where, you know, we want to discuss with you all um, your feelings about the structure and what can be done. You know, we've looked at um, if we bring this up to a usable standard where we can lease the space, um, it's an extensive amount of work to the point where it's re really redoing the structure, which seems to me it defeats the purpose. Um, it, it's equivocal to building a new structure, but you're also just replacing everything that's there, uh, that the historical components. But so that's kind of the preference, preference, preface, excuse me. And, uh, you know, mostly this is a, you know, Gina and um, talking through it uh, on a, um, from a analysis from her team and structural engineer. Um, but basically we've got a building we're not sure, we can't do much with it right now um, without doing, making a lot of changes to it. So the discussion of demo versus really recreating it is kind of what we want to talk about. Yeah, and if, if you want to maybe scroll down to page 11, Emily, what we did was we pulled out a few of these things just so you all can understand what are we talking about when we're saying deficiency. So we can we can stop at this one. So if you can see that column there on the outside, all of these columns on the exterior have had some damage in the past and they're all spliced basically right down the middle. And so what our structural engineer has been saying to us is this, this cannot remain, this is not laterally supported, this is not a safe condition to stay as it is. So essentially all of these need to be replaced. So if you think about all the columns on the exterior being replaced in that way, that's, that's quite a few things that have to be done. Um, and if you want to keep scrolling down to these, Emily, I'll just go through them one by one. This one is all the interior columns. None of them are really secured in the way they need to, to the slab to that base that's shown in there and to the roof structure. So there's sort of multiple sort of bracing pieces that need to be done. And the slab, I didn't pull out a separate picture of this. This slab is not original. As I think most of you know, this was poured. This was a dirt floor in here before. And so this slab got poured, but when it got poured, they didn't go below the frost line all around the exterior. So we really need to bring that back down so we don't have the things that are happening in weather if this becomes more than what it has been in recent years um, from a taking care of the building standpoint. Um, if you scroll to the next image, this is a similar image to the one I showed you before, but trying to zoom in on the rafters there. If you all have ever walked around the outside, um, a few things in this one, those rafters have some pretty extensive water damage on them. Most of them on the exterior need to be replaced. Um, we don't know if it's the full extent of it or a large portion of that rafter will end up being replaced. And in addition, we have to have a new roof. There's currently no lateral support for the system. It, it was a pole barn. It was all open air. Um, and so once these walls got put in place, our structural engineer can say this better, but essentially it's, it's just being held in place barely, but this is not sort of a condition where we would do any kind of work to the building and have people in it and leave it like it is. We have to put these things in the building, a proper lateral support system. So that means new roof sheathing on the top, so that will all need to come off. And there is some interior sheathing in between the columns that's going to have to be added to stabilize what's there. Um, so as you kind of keep going through, I made a little list of some other things that need to happen to secure the structure down. But as you keep going through, you start seeing little by little, <laughs> you've really whittled away at what is still there of the building. And so going back to what Benton said, it's like, are we going to go back with something that is replicating this because it will largely be replaced to make it a safe building for new tenants? Or do we look at other potential uses for it? And and one thing we did too, I know you all ask us uh, frequently, is this going to do anything to the National Register nomination? It's a concern for us as well. We corresponded with the Historic Commission. Um, they said they did come out to see this building. Um, they didn't say when, but recently that uh, Franklin had asked them to come look at it. And they said they would still consider this building contributing. And they could not commit to say whether if we took this building down and put something in its place, that they could really comment on whether it could be delisted or not. So they didn't want to commit to it, if, whether the factory would be delisted or not. If we were to take this down and put something else there, 
they said we couldn't tell you till it was done. And we clearly don't want to wait till it's done because we don't want to delist the factory. That's important for us to keep it on the register. Um, but I also think they came out to see it before we had all this information and before we did this deep dive to understand what really needed to get done to this building. And it, it's pretty extensive to the point where I don't know if they would, uh, we don't know if they would say the same answer if it is largely being reproduced with pieces and parts to keep it together. So we just wanted to had that discussion with you all today. Yeah, and, and one one way that we kind of look at this is it, we and we've got a history in this in the memo um, as well that our historian has put together, and so we know what it was for. We know what it was used for. It was an ancillary use. It was an open air uh, shed that was used for for lumber storage and or drying at different pe periods of time. It was always open air, so it was not in you know it was never. You know, habitable. Uh, it was not a primary building. It was an ancillary shed. So I, I think that, it, and I think that this this comparison maybe came up with um, Gina was speaking with another uh, member of the commission, the state commission, and he was using the kind of the comparison of like an antebellum home and a barn in the back. And you know, the antebellum home is really the primary, right? And maybe you have. You know, maybe you have a pole barn or some open air barn or, or whatever in the back. If the if the barn came down, not the the building, would, the antebellum home, and still remains, it wouldn't necessarily remove that from the register. But if it was the other way around, it certainly would, right? So that's kind of the way we look at the comparison. So for what it's worth. Okay. Anything else from y'all's standpoint? Emily? Um, just wanted to reiterate um, what Gina had said. Uh, we had reached out to State Historic uh, Preservation Office to see that even though there had been uh, the wood walls installed on uh, the, the pole barn, that it would still be, you know, contributing and everything. And they did say that even though there all these you know alterations had happened, it is a contributing structure, and um, they do consider it contributing to the factory campus. Um, I have the uh, three demolition criteria, and just to hit the highlights on them, it, the first one is if a building has lost its architectural and historical integrity, and its removal will not adversely affect the district's historic character. The loss of integrity must be substantiated with photographic documentation and a physical description of the property. Number two, if the denial of the dem demolition results in an unreasonable economic hardship. And then three, if the structural instability or deterioration of a property is demonstrated through a report by a structural engineer or architect, um, the, the report must clearly detail the property's physical condition, reasons why rehabilitation is not feasible, and cost estimates for rehabilitation versus demolition. Okay. Who wants to come? Um, that wasn't, wasn't mentioned yet. Um, I've had numerous conversations with Shannon McCoy talking about the development plan, the approved uses in the development plan, and this building specifically building nine there was a permit from omor uh, school of design and this building was classified as a general office general business use uh, for the purposes of that permit the seafood restaurant that was at the factory there's no record of a permit for that facility uh -huh. the uh -huh. um the school has not occupied that building in a number of years certainly longer than three um any use that is an approved use uh, other than an outdoor storage use, which is not in our development plan, um, would require us to upgrade this particular building to meet current codes for assembly, for restaurant, for retail space. Uh, there's a very high bar in Franklin for... Um, I would add safety. office to that. We did talk to our structural and he said pretty much any use that's going to go in here, you're, you're going to have to... Any of the uses part. permitted in our PUD or we're talking about massive upgrades. So this isn't just about a restaurant or having a new assembly space. It's it's far beyond that uh, at this point. So. Did you have any comment on Omar's I do. Situation? So I've spent a lot of time in this building, <laughs> a whole lot of time. 
and so I have a I have a connection to it. Um, but I would certainly hate to see it demolished. I'll, I'll just tell you because, and I, I think the thing is is that there's there are other there are uses that could be, uh, you know, like an open air market kind of thing. It's just, you know, I'm just really having a hard time with the demolition part because I feel like that there's enough there that it should stay. Thank you. How, how many years ago was did no more occupy it? Uh, we moved back. Ten? We had to, they changed the lease agreement. And so we wound up moving back to the campus. I want to say that was around... 2016 or something like that. Just before cash and tax. Yeah, it's probably 2015. Yeah, 2015. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, it's been <clears throat> What's the story y'all want to tell with this space? Is is an open air market something to consider? Is that a use a, a viable, you know, approved use? One of the criteria, um, as Steph mentioned, was um, that. We need to have a proposed, um, I guess, alternative site plan. Um, we didn't do that for this DRC meeting because we didn't want to be so presumptive about this building. Um, it, uh, the factory in, in its whole is a jewel uh, to the city of Franklin, but also to Holiday. It's very unique and uh, they want to approach this the right way. So we wanted to talk about the structure itself first. Um, we really haven't considered uses uh, that specific. So, is there anything you want to add? Uh, I mean, I think the I would as an open air market, we're going to be. We would have to do a lot of this Still work. The structural issues. I think you're. Yeah. You, Still can't have you people would, in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I mean, to turn it into that, it's got to be taken down to rebuild anything there. I mean, you're. When when you look at the extent of what has to be replaced, you're you're replacing ninety percent of the building uh, to bring it back to anything that you would anybody that would write insurance policy would allow us to put people in there, right? And so I think that's that's really the issue. And so do we have ideas of what could be in the in this area? We do, um, and but you know we we. I don't think we haven't we haven't had a big secret that we want a hotel on the site. This area is part of that location. How we work this building or materials out of this building into that structure, you know, I think we that's that's what we're thinking about. Um, can we work around something that looks like this building and integrates? There probably is a path, but it's still going to be it's not going to be the same building nine that is there today. Right. Can I tag on to what I said? So here's the thing. If it's going to affect the National Register nomination, then there's it's like a deal breaker. Yeah. And I think it would be a deal breaker for all of us. Yeah. So that's really concerning to me because this is a very, very special sure. property. Yeah. And we've all worked really hard on this. Yeah. on both sides. So that would be a deal breaker for all of us. I don't think that when we have no interest in doing that either. Right. Uh, we, we do not. We think that we have a strong case that this is not going to affect the um, status. Yeah. And I mean, if that is a if that's a condition, we agree, and would check that box before so, before so, taking the so, next step. So how how does one find out about that or clarify that? I don't know. Emily said. you? Whenever, how do we get a concrete answer? Whenever I reached out to the state, I. Um, questioned, you know, if the building were, you know, to be demolished, you know, what, you know, did the state think is it contributing despite it, you know, change, having, you know, significant changes to the original structure. And they did say that it was contributing. And so, I mean, our, our guidelines would support that and we would not recommend demolition for it. I think what we would we would propose doing is this was all email correspondence with us and them coming out to the site without really going through this with them. I, I think it would be a multi-step process. We would have to go through this with Historic Commission uh, at the state, 
we'd have to come back out to the site with them. I think before we would move anything forward, they'd have to first see that condition and then see what we would propose to really even be able to understand and answer that question. But I think just echoing what Benton said, I don't think any of us would move forward if it meant the factory was delisted. But, okay. You've got to keep right. in mind what, what the status of, of the building is. I mean, it has to be, got, we can't use it mm -hmm. right now. I mean, we can use it for storage and, you know, but I mean, to really appreciate the buildings, I mean, you got to, you have to do so much to make it you know, habitable. We, you, I mean, you've given us 38 pages of information here. <laughs> so it, it's, um, and, and I th there are some numbers in here. And I think it was a cost to tear it down and a cost to, and to rebuild or cost to reconfigure it when that, yeah. didn't I see that? Yeah, we were mainly I think looking that's, at, yeah, if it, if and, and it's very complete it information. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think we really need to hone in on some of that. You got you got two you got two issues you got the the, the cost issues one but the um, national register issue is the other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, I might ask BNS to weigh in on uh, the costs to stabilize a building versus the cost to bring it up to today's standards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Not to put you on the spot, Brenda. Right. Uh, it's, it's all right. We we typically do not get into the cost estimation portion of this. I've met with these gentlemen on site along with my assistant director and Jared was along for that visit. What they were advised that anything is regarding demolition would have to come back to the commission and they should start with Emily and, and their staff first. Uh, it was referenced a couple of times, you know, the 50% that sometimes comes into play with residential. And I did say that I do not recall since I have been at the city of Franklin, I've worked extensively in the historic district since I have been here, that we have uh, demolished a commercial building. Now, that being said, the building, we did not do an inspection. Obviously, this building has sat for some time, and there are things that would have to be attended to. Uh, the code related, but we did not go through and make a list. That's not what we were there for. It's just to advise. We did not. Uh, we did not advise that the building should be torn down due to the condition. Of what they were advised, depending upon what use you decide to move into this building, at some point in the future as you renovate, then those items would have to come to current code to, to meet whatever the use was at that time. Right, and that's that's what they said yeah. a minute ago. But I think you've got you've you've got some numbers in here. Um, yeah, I can't. The numbers are are for us to do just just that to bring it up to code. I think that and the numbers are you know that that's I guess that's part of the story. But more than anything, it's about what does if we go and spend that money, what do you get? I I, I get it. Yeah, it's a cost benefit. So it's. Um, well, it's for aesthetically too, because you're not going to really retain much of the. You know, it's the historic fabric of the structure. My, my only comment, Mr. Chair, would be that for demolition on this commission is a very high bar. And I think staff laid out the criteria, and I think those were what you'd have to address and convince the commission that, that those were valid. And I think that's kind of where we are. Well, I'm, I'm looking at a letter from Solomon Builders that it's about $2.6 million. Yeah, it's about it's about what it would cost to build a totally new Class A building, too. But, yeah, that's so what um, what the, the background behind that is um, Gina and her consultants put together a plan for what this building would need in both structural and, you know, kind of bring all the stuff up to code that and that that um, plan was what went to Solomon to price it so it's, that's that doesn't that's not tearing it down that's not building something different that's just bringing it back up to you know where we can actually lease it and use it yeah, and then I mean, the question for you is what are you gonna get for two and a half million dollar or two point six million dollars once, you, once yeah. you get it back up there what can you do with it you're gonna get a replica yeah, no, it's not yeah, going to be. But, but, it, yeah, but the use of that, that this any, what, for I your, mean, it'll be ready for any of those uses that we talked about. Yeah, um, All right. it'll just mirror. It, it it won't be the building that's on the register. Mm -hmm. 
right. it would still it would still not be contribute. I, I don't know. Maybe it would be contributing if you replaced it board by board, I guess. That's a good question. We'd have uh, to find uh, out. Yeah, you could um, ask Don't that. know that answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, is there a threshold of replacement? That, mm -hmm. How that, much fabric yeah. can be replaced? It, it's sort of, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's a demo. You're demoing anyway, right? That's right. I mean, that's kind of what the point. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. to take a, down some, a lot of that structure and reconstruct it. The foundation's coming out, the, the roof. Is there the something roof. that we can, you can ask us more pointedly? <laughs> like, what were you expecting us to say? I mean, you know, historical mm -hmm. register, strong against demo. W what else can you ask of us? I mean, that was, Mary's comment was a good one. Of, yeah. uh, is, there, is there a threshold that mm -hmm. it... It might be contributing, but if practically you got to replace 75, 80 percent of it to make it functional, what what is the what's the tipping point there? I mean, the, we could you you know one of the the things we we talked about is you could take the exterior walls off and park under it, but I don't think anybody wants to see that be the use of Building Nine, right? I, otherwise, I don't know what you can ensure. I mean, really. There's not a, there's not something that do anybody's going to in the condition that it's in. Do you have a plan for what you would want to do there? Good. Yeah, I mean, they, I think you stepped out when we mentioned that. I mean, oh, excuse we me. we see a hotel on the site in that general area, right? If we move forward with the request at some point in the future here, that would be the intent would be in this general area. That's where it's going to be next to Liberty Hall and with the events and this this location helps with the scale of what we need to do there of keeping it in scale with the rest of the factory um, and you know there are, there are materials in here that we could take out of building nine and incorporate into a new a new structure into the hotel I mean that that's kind of what we're thinking we do not have a footprint. We don't have a building design. We just know general idea, and this is the building that would be in that path. So, so it looks like the uh, National Register question is the question for the moment, and how that is to be answered, and before we do anything else, from from, from our perspective. I, I, I don't. Is that? Am I missing something? No, that's what you're saying. Like, Greg's and, asking about the exterior elevation. I mean, I, I think that's all been within the last the 90s, 20 years. Yeah. Exterior yeah. elevation is not yeah. part of the conversation. We have a, it's just the structure, and the structure has to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, photos mm -hmm. from the late well, 90s. Well, the exterior so has already been modified. Yes. Correct. Yep. Yeah. It didn't yep. exist before, and then it was added. And it's, what it's, page was that? And it was definitely not so done. I would not say that this was to the secretary standards. We would not have been allowed to do this, I think, if we were modifying was, a building like this. Page 11. It was a tax the, credit yeah. project, five. Five. so uh, five. theoretically five. Uh, the changes were approved. Mm -hmm. uh, that might not have been, it, it could have been that just the main building was part of the tax credit. Mm -hmm. But I would think you could send that question up. We did. We did ask that, and we have the not, national we have not gotten an answer back yet. And you so. don't have an answer yes. yet. Yeah. And Mary, it might have been whenever you stepped out. Um, the, <laughs> yeah, I had to step out. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, with the wood walls, the mm -hmm. State Historic Preservation Office does still consider it to be contributing. I can see that yeah. because it could be pulled off and I guess in if you were doing everything you possibly could to preserve every element at the factory which you are doing but if you proceeded with that if there were a way that could be incorporated into the hotel you know I don't I don't know. I'm not that creative. I don't know. But if an architect could envision that. Okay. Is there anything else we can... 
offer to these folks? When you say incorporate, you say in, you're, are you saying that form, the form, the form, the form. The, form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the only thing I would say is the documentary that you all did on yeah, Calvin and Marilyn was stunning. So thank you. Good. Okay. I know of nothing else we can add. <laughs> I hope we can work it out, though. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. well, thank, thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> okay. Discussion of addition principle at 328 Franklin Road. Matt Christensen. Okay, who's going to take the lead on this one? I will. <laughs> Not you, is that what you're going to say? Okay, so Matt and Kara Christensen, Garden Gate Homes, our homeowner, Leanne James. Hi. Hi there. And we're back. Yeah, good. So we think we have something that might work this time. Um, so recap on the property, um, it's a tricky one for sure. This is, was a three lot property, three 70 foot wide lots that the homeowner bought, um, thinking she could build something for her and a small house for her mom. Um, but when going to the city to talk about zoning for the addition of the historical home, um, it sits on a 14-foot setback, and the, there she was told the setback is a 35-foot setback. And so with 370-foot wide lots, that made no sense. That makes it unbuildable. So in order to get the variance to get the addition, they asked her to make the three lots one lot, which is, I think, what they had on file, so they could make it work. Um, which she was okay with doing as long as she could get an accessory dwelling. So we presented something last time. Um, there's new rules. Uh, the architect has kind of hit the books trying to figure out what we could do. Brian, you mentioned in the last meeting, could you attach the home to the garage? And the current where the garage currently sits, that's not possible or it goes way over your percentage rule um, that you mentioned was a new rule, the 50%. So we did think, well, what, what about the possibility of moving the garage? so that we could attach it to the home, keep it intact, um, but attach it to a small mudroom. Um, would that be something that would please you all, <coughs> plus meet zoning regulations, plus meet the homeowner's needs? Um, so that's what we've, we've kind of tried doing here, is just uh, attaching uh, the garage, moving the garage and attaching it to the home. And that way she can have a small accessory dwelling for her uh, mom. So if you look at the prints on page two that Emily has right there, you're seeing where the existing garage is. That does not include the right lean-to. There's two lean-tos on the garage. I think you, you'll see the pictures. Um, the right lean-to has already fallen down. It's dilapidated. It was not built with any foundation. The left side does have foundation. There's a brick foundation that it sits on. The right side was not built and it fell down. We've tried to, um, we've looked and it does look like they were added on, but we can't tell when if that was in the 50 year mark. Emily mentioned that, if you could find that out. Homeowner and uh, we've had some other people trying to help. We can't find any information of what year the garage was built, if it was the same year as the home or when the lean-tos were added onto. Um, in fact, the person who grew up in the home was not able to help us either. So we don't think that's obtainable, that information. Um, but if you look at the pictures, the right side is fallen down. So we didn't include that in that uh, where the architect shows that existing, if you include the right lean-to, it's actually almost on the property line. It's like inches from it. So it's, it's um, non-conforming. It's out of compliance anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you can see that picture, you see the right side is, is down. So um, if we take the garage with the left lean-to, and it needs to be repaired to stay up, but we'll do that, and move it to attach to the house the way the plans show, um, it... it serves two things. It helps the homeowner get an accessory dwelling, but it also brings it off the property line because that right side that's fallen down is, if that were to be rebuilt, it'd be the church is next door. It's kind of, uh, I don't think it's good. Um, so it kind of helps both those things be met. Um, the other thing we did to the plans, uh, the last meeting, a few people mentioned that the back looked like a two-story building, too tall. So we brought that roof line down and made the windows smaller so it looked better. Um, so we've done that, and then we talked about adding the awning over the front door uh, for weather, and we put a small little awning over that front door. 
So that's really where we're at today, and we're here to get your feedback. Okay, Emily? So with the, let me scroll back up to the first page. The existing footprint with adding the heated and cooled breezeway, the existing garage then will count as part of the historic footprint. So therefore, the addition can be a little bit bigger. And so as it sits now, the um, addition is 55.5% of uh, the existing footprint. Let's see. The awning to the front, as we have discussed in previous design review committee meetings, is um, appropriate. Um, the adding the screen in here to this little um, little breezeway that is also appropriate within the guidelines. And that's the high points. Thanks. What did you say the uh, percentage was on the addition? 55.5. And it sits on, okay, so I think, the, three acres. The, the existing three. house plus the garage um, comes up to be 2541. And the addition that they want is 1411 square feet, right? The, the total addition footprint is 1411. Okay, that's what I mean. All right. And the 1411 is 55% of the 2541. So, okay. So that's where we are. Comments? Brian? I'm sorry. Okay. Brian? Uh, the only comment I would have on the uh, being it in that 55% is that it's a very large lot. At three acres so I understand that uh, and so so with the garage you will reorient its position correct and I'm assuming the brick is a veneer yes just a veneer mm -hmm. so that would be removed and then put back correct okay I don't have any other questions okay. thank you Kathy I think it's looking a lot better it doesn't um, and, and I think the elevation's very attractive. Um, it's over 5%, all right? Close to that? It's yes. a little over? It's 5.5% yes. over. Okay. I mean, you do have a huge lot, but I could be forgiving on that. But it's always nice when you try and meet the guidelines as best <laughs> as you can. So it, it, tweak it down a little? I don't know. <laughs> But um, it's nice to have that incorporated breezeway. So the, the bonus is you got the garage added in yes. to the overall square footage. So you that was to your favor. Yes. So that was great. So. What, what is the lot coverage uh, of the combined structure now? Do we have that somewhere? Up? <clears throat> Just for grins. get this thing to work right. Do y'all know what the size of the lot is? Square footage? Is there, is there a survey in the file? There's just this uh, front page and it has Where's survey should have there. another attachment with just a survey, Emily, or maybe it's she doesn't have included in here. I mean, A1 doesn't have it, so I don't, I don't know. No, that's usually where it is. 
No, it wasn't in this submittal. I think oh. it might have been in y'all's. We'll just the last we'll need to know that. I think it was last last time, but we didn't have it in this meeting. I think it Sorry. was like eleven or thirteen percent, somewhere around that. Yeah. Eleven seems the, to be a theme we've had on several properties, so it, mm -hmm. we'll just need to have that when you come back. Yep, got it. And <clears throat> does this allow you all to build a second structure? Correct. <clears throat> that solves the problem. Um, I would have. But you couldn't keep the garage where it is. Not and do it and do a second structure because it was over 200 uh, square feet, and so then it automatically counts as your accessory structure. You can't build another one. Gotcha. Given how the zoning is, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a solution. Uh, I probably would have supported in this situation this large of an addition. I think moving something and then saying, oh, that's part of the historic fabric. Um, if it works with the zoning, I guess, okay. I don't quite understand the logic, but if that makes it work. Okay, anything else? I just have one question. This would be on, on the back, so it's the shed dormer. Mm -hmm. I know it has a low slope rubber roof. Correct. Would that have been your first choice? No. The architect suggested that. One of the questions I had on getting these new prints back, which is right when the deadline, um, this was kind of communicated this week, but um, can we change that now that we've lowered it to a metal roof? He mm -hmm. suggested only rubber in the first meeting with it being so high. Homeowner wanted high as high as she could at first, so mm. that was why. But now that we've lowered it, one question is can we go back to a metal roof? That was our first ask. Well, I Would think you you'd be more pleased with a metal roof. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And another question I had was, are, am I seeing skylights on the the shed that's below the shed dormer? Correct. Correct. In and the back. Emily, did you have any comments on the skylights? So they are appropriately placed as they're not seen from street view. And so they're kind of tucked on that <coughs> rear addition. And so they would be supported by the guidelines. Okay. Anything else? I only have one other comment, just aesthetically, and, and you may like that large plate glass window. And actually, in a in a ranch style house, that that might be appropriate on the back. But yeah, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to reserve preference. my comment. <laughs> okay, that's good. I thought the same thing. It's a ranch. It's not typical what we, but this is a '50s ranch, a little bit different. Yeah. Got anything, Kathy? Yeah. No. And they're vanishing. Yeah. Okay. Progress. Yes, Thank you. Progress. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item is discussion of demolition and new construction at 251 Second Avenue South. Brandon, you're back. So we, the information we provided, we kind of created a couple, a uh, couple different pieces. I think we want to look at the assessment of the existing building first, and then we can talk about the potential future use after that, if that's okay. <clears throat> this is Troy Van Leer. He owns property. Uh, he engaged us uh, several weeks ago, us being 906, and basically said, hey, hey what can I do with my building? And this is to clarify uh, the property is the the old ice house and then the adjacent warehouse structures. Um, and then furthest to the east, there's a, a brick building that was built in the 80s or 90s. I'm not exactly sure when. Um, houses a studio. It's a single-story building. Houses a, a studio there now. <clears throat> so we said, okay, let's, let's take a look, see what you have. Um, and got in there and... And, and there's uh, there's a lot going on. So for purposes of this discussion, the way I'm kind of thinking of things is we've got the you know the old ice house building, that original brick building from the early 1900s, functioned as the ice house here in town. Um, obviously, the anything that happens there 
preserve it, celebrate it, love it, renovate it, let it shine. It's it's the jewel of that block. Um, and and none of none of our assessment really <clears throat> dealt with that. It's a single story building. You renovate it, you know, clean some things up, but that's to me that's relatively straightforward. Um, I think the piece that to me is is the challenge and the, the piece that our uh, existing uh, conditions report focused on is that both the warehouse and then the infill. So uh, in looking at historic photos, we had that warehouse that was built kind of in the middle and then they came on later and added on an infill piece that connected that warehouse to um, to the ice house and actually came over top of the roof. You can get inside of that and there's there's an image we had you can see the stick framing and actually walk on the old roof uh, of the ice house um did a, a pretty extensive look through that warehouse and it's just a very very challenging building to do much with um or to to, to deal with because uh, there's multiple levels um there's stairs sprinkled throughout um if you were going to do a, a large renovation, uh, which which at this point and and part of uh, what Troy came to us with is, <clears throat> you know we've you know to the point where I need to to probably um, <coughs> invest in, in a little more significant renovation, but I don't you know I don't want to keep putting band aids on things. What would it look like to do something that would you know potentially look at a, a change of use? what's what's a different way I can use that to do that you, you'd have to do some pretty extensive renovations um, as y'all know and uh, kind of came up earlier changing use triggers uh, adherence with with uh, with all you know current building code structural accessibility uh, life safety again would entail a pretty extensive renovation and as I detailed in this the, the layout of this building would just make that a very significant i'm not sure how it would be technically feasible you've got you know cast concrete stairs in different locations you've got multiple levels i don't know how that would become accessible it would be it would be a very very significant challenge if not impossible so with with all that said as as we looked at it as you know the, the existing structure there's some steel there's places where they've cast concrete just a very and, and typical of, of a, a plant like that it was a disjointed piece then they built on as they needed to build on they they did things as they wanted to at a time it, it creates a, a disjointed overall feel and makes it de very difficult if you're going to come back um, do a renovation, give that a new use, and, and have a more cohesive layout, you would just run into some real technical infeasibility. So with that, our our uh, our, our overall kind of takeaway was, um, uh, I think uh, I think it would be difficult, if not impossible, to bring this up to a code that will let you do a use uh, like, say, uh, you know, a full business, you know. A full office space, um, uh, you know, multifamily apartments, any sort of use, it would just be a very heavy lift. And those are, by the way, all uses that are uh, that are allowed within the current um, the the current zoning. Um, so, and and again, Brian, let me let me yeah, stop you right here. Yeah. Orient us to what we're looking yep. at on that on this side, the overview here. I see the ice house. I know exactly what that is. Okay. The next is showing a 1951 addition, yep. and you were mentioning warehouse. Is that the that's, warehouse? That's, that's, that's that. Well, the 50, yes. The 51 is the warehouse. Yes, it's the warehouse. And then the blue. That's um, the ice house. The, the, the blue addition in the next to that, right behind Dixie Poultry Processors. Yeah. Is that, that part of that warehouse, too? No, no for reference, that was, there was an that was just for reference. There was an old building there that was torn okay. down many years ago. So okay. the warehouse is that middle, the white, the infill is the gray that's the piece that was added on that connected that warehouse to the ice house okay and then the blue hatch behind that that's the 1980s 1990s edition kind of the right. the brick okay. skin I'm familiar piece with that. yeah so and then the red hatch is uh, i'm i'm not sure that's his circa 51 i don't know if that's true I, I just don't know when exactly that was built but that's Again, the warehouse that that's the part red of, hatch huh that's part of it yes part of, okay all right yes all right yeah, and then the next, if you want to scroll down, 
This is oriented in the same way, but this is a blow up of that kind of central warehouse area. And what we wanted to do here was just kind of underscore areas where we've got multiple levels. You've got, you know, stairs kind of bringing you up two feet. Okay. There, there's not any sort of a stair core. There's not a circulation path. It's, there's just a lot going on there. Um, and I, without, this was the clearest way I could think to to communicate. That, that's that. fine. I'm just so, trying to yeah. make sure I understand. Yeah, absolutely. What's that? A little bit. Um, the yeah. Well, the levels are actually in the ice house. Yep. The yeah. ones the, I'm seeing. Well, there's a couple intermediate. Yeah. Some of the stairs, there are a couple intermediate ones. They would actually be um, outside They're actually of, in the back part. Got it. A couple pieces of Mari, yes. Gotcha. And then several of those are in the, the warehouse itself. And part of those would even be, you know, if you would expose some of those stairs where you have some level changes, you know, if, if you did something with the warehouse. Um, so we, again, kind of outlined some images. Again, part of that evaluation, just the, the streetscape is what it is. Not ideal. Um, I will think at this point, I just, what we want is, you know, just to get your reactions to this. And, and I think ultimately the, the recommendation is it would be, uh, you would be creating, from a money standpoint, you would spend much, much more to, to have to renovate this, to get this to the point that you could then uh, turn it over for a different type of use than you would if you were able to, to demolish that and come back and, and build something new that would would to be perfectly honest allow the ice house to to shine the way it's kind of unable to now because you're overwhelming the roof the the planes along the street are the same it wouldn't you couldn't build that today right you wouldn't be able it, it just doesn't conform to the design standards um so that's that was where our evaluation landed and and would love uh thoughts and feedback on on looking at that as a as a path forward for that building Okay, Emily. So, um, in the National Register listing for the downtown uh, Franklin Historic District, it lists this whole property as a contributing, even though it has the different additions throughout time. And throughout those additions, you know, it just shows the evolution through time. And so, the guidelines would not support demolition of this as it shows evolution through time and um, also for the the demolition criteria there are three of the criteria uh, first one is the architectural and historical integrity and if it is removed if the if this building or parts of the building are removed it sh shouldn't uh, adversely impact the district the second is um, if dem if denial of demolition it will result in, in an unreasonable economic hardship on the applicant um, then that is one of the criteria and the third is that if there's structural instability or deterioration but it has to be demonstrated through a report by a structural engineer or architect and then um, with a with it being detailed for the property's physical condition, reasons why rehabilitation is not feasible, and cost estimates for the rehabilitation versus demolition. And so the guidelines would not support demolition for those reasons. Yep. Thanks. And we're in the process of assembling some of the cost estimate cost. piece. Yeah, we've got we've got some folks looking at that. So, um, so, so, so other than the ice house and the antique, and I know there's some uh, there's some businesses behind there. Mm -hmm. A printing business for one, I know. Yep. But what other uses are being used in that property now? Um, so, there, well, Troy, I'll let you yeah. speak to that. Yeah, um, of course, in the old ice house, is the, it's right. retail. And, yeah, right, right, right. Beyond right. that, it's uh, <clears throat> it's almost all office space. The, okay. On the far end, it's a um, Taekwondo studio right now, okay. or a Jiu Jitsu studio. So, the space is being utilized. All the space is being utilized. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay, so economic hardship's not an issue. Um, all right, well then cost estimates, I think, are the yeah. the big thing. 
comments? It would be a hard no for me. It's a great building, and yes, there are different levels inside, but that's just part of it. And and I can't imagine that corner without that building there. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quirkiness is part of its charm. It, it, it would be a hard no for me too. So you're asking to demolish all the buildings with the exception of the ice house? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. A lot to absorb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it took us a while to get our head around it too. It's a yeah. It's a it's a dense site in a good way. Yeah. Mary. The the, um, the amount of square footage that you want to demolish that's historic is how much? Because there is there's a new building. Yes. Where yes. that's so, printing in Taekwondo. Yeah. Is. So my understanding is the the pieces and and Emily, please correct me. The pieces that would be considered historic are are really just that the gray and the white. We'll call it on on that site plan. The Taekwondo Studio is not. I would I would assume that's would nobody would have or, or at least I can I can say you know historically that wouldn't impact wouldn't have the, the character there. That. Yes, ma'am. Um, but it'll be that. Uh, so the the it's addition, this, this rear blue addition that says 1980, uh -huh. 1990. Yeah. So that one would be considered not historic, but right. everything else yeah. is, is, is because it's over the fifty years. Yeah. And the red, the red slash, I'm not positive of. So I'll correct what I said a moment ago. That would that the would red be as well. Is. Uh, I believe. And I don't know the exact date. Uh, um, I would guess it's older. I, I would be surprised if it wasn't older than 50 the, years. Gotcha. We just don't know if it's, you know, what that date is. It's hard. There's a, there's some images. We've had a real challenge tracking down a ton of information on this um, on this site to know when all the different pieces and, and parts came in. And I think part of our challenge as well, kind of back to that streetscape, uh, and it's even similar a little bit to what the discussion was on a couple projects ago, by the time we pulled to do what you would need to do to make that a, a functional building envelope today, I mean, if you look at it now, you can, if you go in that attic space, you can see daylight. I just don't know what would be, you know, there'd, there'd be some substructure. I'm not sure what would be retain because you've got some some t111 siding that's you know you're not going to keep that you, you can't feasibly keep that um, some metal siding and in, in differing levels of disrepair um, it, it just felt like if you were going to do something there that was a, a meaningful renovation it's gonna it's gonna look very different anyway um, so that was that was the challenge that we came as far as you know when you're it's just a unique, it's unique in that I don't, it would, the preservation piece, I just don't know what you're preserving from a building skin and envelope standpoint. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, I understand. I got to defer to my fellow commissioners though on the, the demolition aspect of it right now. Mm -hmm. Although the concept is really nice. Love it's really nice. It, I mean, it's just, it, I think it could really be a statement piece in that in that area, but we got to get through the, yeah. the demolition But part. you mentioned the challenge, the challenge for you. Yeah. Well, part of the challenge for us is if we accept that argument about what to demolish, I mean, you, you could have demolished half of downtown Franklin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, so That's that true. that is part of the challenge. It does cost to renovate. It does cost to have a, a historic business and yeah. historic area, but we reap the benefit in in other ways. So that that becomes a challenge yeah. for us. Absolutely, and and I guess I would argue this one is a little unique in that its its location is you know on the edge of that downtown core. Again, back to the back to the skin. You know, you're not talking about coming in with a you know, a, a beautiful brick building that's gonna that's gonna retain that character. You know, once you come through and, and do what you need to do to bring this up to standards, you're you're gonna have all new siding. It's 
you're going to have impacted that look regardless um, in a way that you, you know, if you've got a building that's got uh, a little more kind of substance to, it, substance to it on the perimeter that, that you can, you know, it's got some character and you maintain that character and that's part of the story. Our, our concern here is that it's going to change it massively anyway and and there's you know back to the the burden you're you're having from from our standpoint design wise you're gonna have to make so many compromises to to make that work that you're you know you just end up with a you end up with a a much less effective building for someone to to have uh, in lease there's one has that i'm trying to say this Number one, I don't think the steps are a good argument. I'll say that. Okay. Because um, that's a lot of places. Mm -hmm. So um, I would take that off the table. If we were seeing something that if there was an if there were you know an engineering report and all mm -hmm. that and it said you 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 know something's got to happen, what? I guess when I look at what's presented, none of the form is left. It's like we're doing another um, completely new building. And you're talking about when you're looking at the kind of that next piece, those mm -hmm. renderings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. And and that um, that feels overwhelming even if you made the argument, I mean, if you successfully made the argument mm -hmm. um, that this just couldn't be reused, which that may not be a stretch. I mean, I yep. don't know. Um, but the departure, the complete departure from the form would, would be a concern. And that would be my would be a big concern for me. Okay. Um, so what we tried to do the the concept behind and we may mm -hmm. if we want to move into those concept images because you know part of the demo is well what do you mm -hmm. want to put back there the you know back to the challenge that existing presents you know we. In looking at, at how to handle that site, we, we looked at the uh, Envision Franklin document and mm -hmm. how it kind of talks about what needs to, you know, mm -hmm. what needs to happen there if you're going to do something. It talks about streetscape, set, streetscape setbacks, mm -hmm. about some open public space. We tried to accommodate for both of those. Again, back to the existing building, it is right at the property line. So from a streetscape standpoint, you just wouldn't have the opportunity working within that existing to do really anything it would be right you couldn't out go right at the property line what's excuse me you couldn't go right at you you could i guess when you know when we're thinking about streetscapes mm -hmm. you know you've got some setbacks and entries you know you want to have a canopy that overhangs well with where that building is now you're right on the public way and it kind of keeps you from doing any of that um, not to mention it's all you know kind of fully built out as is it, it you know this what we're showing here, you would you would obviously pull a big piece away to allow the ice house to kind of stand and shine to to have your uh, to have that public public plaza piece in the middle. Uh, again, it's uh, the existing is just so much in. I, I I fully appreciate and and agree and understand it. It is. It's unique. It's quirky, but it is also in stands in very stark contrast to really the existing design and guidelines that are there now to where if we wanted to come back and and redevelop it, I'm, but I'm not you, quite sure how that would work I think when you come back you're going <clears> to <throat> want to show that whole street past that this building <clears throat> the the context oh kind of continuing east mm -hmm. okay because that's where I think it's going to show that it's really going to stand out, mm -hmm. the height. Yep. And, and we were looking kind of in both directions 
on the block, both mm -hmm. uh, really more going up towards second because that's where you start to get uh, some precedent for height. I mean, the existing building itself sets a height precedent as you go as you go up second. You know, towards uh, towards the center of town, you've got the the lodge, the brownstones. But our thing says ten percent block mm -hmm. face. Yep. And thank you for bringing that up. So we would look. I think it does. It right? does. It's mm -hmm. the ten percent within the block face. So we would look to the ice house that mm -hmm. is remaining mm -hmm. and then behind here let me pull it up on google street view for us it is a single story right uh building right. and so it would have to if it was demolished hypothetically it would you could not be above you'd have to be in that 10 percent of the ice house mm -hmm. and that existing um building that's kind of behind where everything is now. So, so conceptually, I guess what I was gonna, the thinking was conceptually, you would say, well, this existing fabric was here, there was height here, there was a precedent for all that. You don't, you're not able to get kind of credit for that once that comes down, I guess is the question. And I think we're kind of putting the cart before the horse. I we, think we've you're gotten, on we're the going side to design. of the street where that was. <laughs> we're off on design when we, when dem demolition, I think, is yeah. the real issue. Yeah, we've got, but, so, you know, I was just, just saying that even if they achieve the demolition, Brian, in fairness to their efforts, I wanted to point the height out. That, that is a good point. Good. We're to the point then we've got the justified demolition. That's the next step. Yeah. Step and that's one. and that's a more detailed uh, more detailed report and then yeah. obviously the cost yeah. estimate yeah. that we're yeah. working yeah. on. Yeah. Let there's your Google map. Yeah. Can we clarify something? So in the site map, the one I'm looking at on page one, I guess, shows the ice house to, ice house to be restored. Is that the case? I mean, uh, what I'm hearing from you is that you don't want to, I mean, I'm hearing two things. So the, the, I, when I, and I guess for the purposes of the term ice house, I'm talking about the original brick kind of single story building. Right. That is ice saved house. and restored. Yes, yeah, okay. that is saved and restored. Okay, so I don't think that that really came across in your presentation. Okay, well, I apologize. I, and that was the point of this site plan and highlighted that in blue just yeah. to clarify. Yeah. It did to me. Okay. What? So then, yeah. so then the part you wanting to demolish then is the other parts yeah. beyond yes. that brick? Yes. Okay. No, we would not in any way, shape, or form ever suggest demolishing okay. the ice house. Okay, I just want to make sure no, I understand. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you clarifying that. No, I, <laughs> that's what I heard, so okay. I just want yeah, to make sure. I got that you would make it, uh, I can't remember the words you said, shine or some word yes, like that. Oh, okay, anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you, you all. Thank you. A break before the next three. All right, need a 10 minute break? Yes. Okay. All right, let's take a 10 minute break then. Thank you. Mr. Hathaway's back there, he needs to stretch. <laughs> you got to watch that guy. Yeah, I know. Good idea.
Right. Oh, it just. How do you, how do you, you know, what's the concept of this thing? I know what I would do, but. He's Kathy not doing it. Kathy and Mary are, fill, are deep in philosophical conversation. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll get it started, at least. Um, so we're excited. You know, we're coming back to you af after having been at the Historic Zoning Commission meeting. You recommended we come back to DRC. We've made some modifications to lots 5, 6, and 8. The ones that are closest uh, to the to the to the hall to Magnolia Hall, and want to share with you are the changes we're proposing. Get your feedback. Uh, we have had a lot of conversation, as you know, about the height and the criteria of that uh, of the houses being below the height of the the what do you call that level? Bridge. The bridge. The bridge level. Um, so. Um, we worked hard to, to get those at least a foot below. And uh, you'll see that in the information you've received. Um, I don't know if you want to do these. I guess we should do these individually, Jim? Yes. We'll start with five, obviously, then. Um, one of the big things that happened, and, and I want to be very transparent. We're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. Um, hopefully, you guys know me. I'm trying to be a man of character. Um, when we originally measured the house, we counted bricks, and I think there was a calculation issue in our office that uh, we used a, a different size, a modular size or versus standard. Anyways, ultimately, uh, when we, we came back and realized that the height was such a big deal that we wanted to make sure we had it right. So we went in and measured from the finished floor elevation up through the second floor and the stairwell so we could get an exact number. And then there's an attic access that goes up through the roof structure up to the to that um, pad level. So we were originally 33 feet to finish grade at the Magnolia House. When we did that measurement, we came up to 34.9. So that's the number we're using now is this sort of red line, for lack of a better term, a glass ceiling uh, for all these houses to be evaluated under. So. As we go through here, we've made sure that each one of those are below that line by at least a foot. Um, you also expressed some concern about the massing and the scale. So we have some information that we can share with you that hopefully will help you feel comfortable with the, the sheer mass you know, that you can compare apples to apples on, and then also the scale as well. Um, we did a comparison of the, the proposed house next to Magnolia Hall, so you can see directly what that scale uh, comparison is. And we've also uh, thirdly heard that you said uh, you want it more simple. And so that was a big criteria for us as we're looking at these. I know on one house we had a turret that we've removed. Um, we had a lot of turrets at the beginning. <laughs> so we're, we're changing this, uh, the name of the community from Magnolia Hall to No More Turrets. <laughs> Um, we've simplifi simplified details, um, tried to main, um, mainstream materials to make sure that we weren't over stimulating these houses with too many materials. So bottom line, um, we come to you with revisions that we want your feedback on. Uh, it's important to us as it is to you guys to create a beautiful community at the end of the day. We had a chance to meet with staff um, before we resubmitted and and I don't want to speak for them. I got a I got a comfort level that we were at the point where they could recommend approval. So um, we've come a long way to get to that point, and I appreciate staff and, and their efforts to help us with that. So um, again, appreciate all your feedback. I think it's every time we've done these, uh, we've gotten better, and that usually is the case. And 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 appreciate the feedback. It's it's challenged to design by committee, but. You know, in, individually, you guys have given us good feedback that we've been able to incorporate. So with that said, uh, glad to go through each one of these individually and just talk about some of the detail. I will say, uh, starting with lots five, just to reiterate, we are 162 feet from the face of Magnolia Hall. And if you look at Magnolia Hall on that uh, image above, sorry, go up. A little bit higher, Emily. Are you controlling it? <laughs> uh, so that image there, that's a comparison of the, um, the house we're proposing next 
directly next to uh, Magnolia Hall. Now, obviously, they're not that close together. The length of Magnolia Hall, as you look at it on the right, it's about 120 feet. We're, uh, we're going to be 160 feet from Magnolia Hall, so it's a, it's a substantial gap between. Um, you've also seen the trees out there. They provide a lot of edge to the view as you drive into the community, so uh, that was intentional to, to create this beautiful procession to the, to the main Magnolia Hall. Um, when we measured the massing, to get back to that comment, um, if you take Magnolia Hall and just the main two-story house, you take the face of Magnolia Hall width and vertical height, including the inset, that's about 123, 123, 1,237 square feet of vertical mass. And that's not including what's on the sides, it's just that main box. So the house here that we're proposing is roughly 800 square feet of mass, including the insets, anything that's vertical, the insets of that facade. So it's about a 65% mass comparison to Magnolia Hall. Um, our heights are still the same. We're still 10 foot ceilings down, nine foot ceilings up. So we haven't raised the height. We've lowered some slopes of roofs in order to make sure we're under the, um, the height restriction. Um, and again, we've simpli simplified materials and, and details and everything we could <laughs> to try to keep it uh, where the, the main Magnolia home is the, still the, the jewel. So can I answer any questions or I'd, again, I'd love your comments. Um, we really appreciate the applicant, you know, providing these alternate images and um, just working with us through um, this whole process and every design I feel like continues to get better. They just look fabulous. Um, we do want to comment that the height, let's see, that the Mansion Ridge here says it's 706.4 and Lot 5 Ridge is 705.1 and the guidelines, you know, would recommend, you know, it to be less. And additionally, within the guidelines, let me pull it up. Because this was, the development plan was approved in December of 2021, it is in the old guidelines. So there is this one guideline that we want to call out that uh, make new buildings compatible with adjacent structures in floor to ceiling heights. Appropriate heights for new construction are from eight feet to 10 feet. And so the previous designs are within that guideline and they meet the guideline. I believe these, um, uh, these houses uh, tonight are a little bit more. I believe that it is 10 foot, one inch, if this will load. Here we go. Is it 11? I think it, yeah, I think it was, oh, I lied. It's 11 feet, two inches, uh, so. Can I clarify really quick, Emily? So so it's clear, uh, that's a floor to floor height. Okay. That's not a ceiling height. Okay. Yeah. That's why it's 11 foot three. It's the, the structure of the floor between the first floor and second floor is one foot, four inches. Okay. I believe is right. So it would meet the guidelines of being between eight to 10 feet? Yes. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's a good But thanks for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll call that out specifically. That's yeah. Um, additionally, I believe that on the plans, it notes that, uh, here it is, that um, aluminum clad wood windows are proposed. The guidelines would recommend uh, to utilize uh, wood windows or um, composite wood windows. Okay. And those are our comments. Okay. The, um, so the height of the, I, I think the, the overall plan and the elevation shows a much more simplified house and it really, I think it really, it doesn't compete as much with Magnolia Hall. I wish that it were not as tall though. 
I feel like it's really bumping up the height of Magnolia Hall, and I, I really would prefer to see it lower. That's my comment. And I appreciate that. And we have tried, we have done everything that's this side of making it an ugly house. And I don't mean that, that your comment would make it an ugly house, but, you know, you can um, adjust roof slopes to where it doesn't feel appropriate, as you know, for certain styles. So we're trying to balance all that. And, you know, with uh, creating a beautiful community means, in this case, we're creating economically a higher price product that there's some expect expectations for that buyer. So, but thank you for your comment. I don't have any comments. I think staff covered it. Great, thank you. I think it's beautiful. And, and again, Matt, thank you for that hand rendering. They're just charming. Um, <laughs> when I went to the site too, what, what impressed me was and I appreciate you lowering the height as best as you can so thank you for that uh, and the massing as well was looking at all of them in a row you know trying to envision what they would look like um, like the, the streetscape the front elevation of it and is there any way you can give us a drawing of that next time or is it in the next package or? it was supposed to be in this packet and when we uh, transferred it through the it idt system oh is that the empty spot up here yeah, yeah. yeah. that's Some, we so weird we we ended up republishing the new packet that was sent and it's yeah. still, and it's still okay yeah but it's on the copy we have when we sent it okay. so it's it's a weird pdf thing maybe we need what to that was. fix the pdf you may need to refresh your page okay. your browser and then go back into it again. And you may You'll be able to it. see it on the other yeah, ones. On I think it came through on six and okay. eight. Well, going to the site, I'm glad the streets are paved now, half paved, Yeah, um, was really a good thing. And it, is there any way we could like stake out some of the, I'd like another site visit too. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think um, stake out some of the lots, just the footprints, sure. just to get an idea and then maybe give us a, a stick with a height? I don't know. Um, just to get some idea just how massing, uh, it's not regenerating, just how massive it is, but. Can you cut your mic on? It is on. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's on. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I get that. The um, Obviously, the challenge is a, a two-dimensional mass, but we, we, we'll see what we can do to be able to help you visualize that I think the uh, the other thing is when you think about you're looking as you drive down that aisle mm -hmm. you're looking at Magnolia Hall right all our houses are going to be catty corner is that the right word per which is an advantage yeah I yeah, think. yeah so I think it reads much less too yeah because of that perspective view is your streetscape a front elevation it is okay here's yeah. the one I've pulled up from this is the the next yeah. house but Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. But I'm kind of looking at sort of like some other projects we've seen come before us, where it's actual sort of the perspective and having that angle of the house, which is a, a big benefit to massing. I think if you could do that kind of yeah, let us look at that. It's a technology is challenging. It doesn't always show you exactly the feel, but it out the sky and. There you go. <laughs> we'll just 3D we'll 3D print it on site. <laughs> Mary? Well, I, I'm pleased, of course, that it's simplified. Yeah. Um, I was not a turret fan, although the drawings <laughs> were fabulous in the right place. And I actually even found there's a... Um, Harry Potter development now, I found. Oh, really? Yeah, you need to look at it. <laughs> anyway, it's we'll buy, we'll charming. Some turrets. charming. Um, the one side, if there could be some breaks, that one side to me um, feels like it just goes straight back. If, if there could be uh, some break in that, I would would like to see that. Which side, left side? Which elevation mm -hmm. is that? It's the left. No, 
Maybe it's the other side. That's the courtyard, so it's that one. That's yeah. If if there's if that's uh, if you could look at that, and um, do, I don't know. Does the land? I don't know if it does. It just sit level with Magnolia Hall at that point. No, we're up. Yeah, we're up a little bit. Uh, lot five. It's level front to back, but it's, it's two feet. Isn't it? Yep, lot five is about two feet two above feet, okay. Magnolia Hall. So that's and something else we try to note in the elevations. There's sort of yeah. There's where it is with the grade, which is those red lines. Yes. But then there's also another height comparison on those dimensions to the side mm -hmm. that shows you kind of apples right. to apples height comparison. So it's significantly shorter, but mm -hmm. it is also lower on the site. So we tried to address both. I I actually I, I love um, the idea that Kathy had. If we could have them marked out, and I think Mike, before you've done PVC pipe or something to show. The height. Yeah. This, um, the good news. Not balloons. <laughs> not balloons. <laughs> they blow. <laughs> the good yeah. news is this is a big deal project, and the bad news is it's a big deal project. Yeah. So everyone is just wanting to get it right so bad, and I know you all and your team are wanting to get it. Oh, we are. Right. It's a legacy so, project yes. for everybody involved. Thank you. We just want to get going. We're I understand. You know, we, um, we, we do improve as we continue, but there's a point where you've got to get past that. And there's, there's a balance between deferring to what I call the Queen Magnolia Hall yeah. and the new houses. And then the other side of that ditch is they're expensive homes and people want them to be unique. I get right, it. Right. And that's right. where we're trying to walk down that lane. But I know Bernie and the team have had a great response from this, and there's a lot of people that want to be there. Awesome. Uh, I think, to y'all's point, or to your credit, all the open space has been a big draw mm -hmm. for a lot of these clients. So, Okay, I do like the simplification that you've made, number one. Good. Number two, it looks to me like the height, the overall height, if you've got a 34-9 mansion height, then the height of this house to grade is 33-5. That's that's what I'm seeing. I think that's right. It's, is that? I think that's right. It's, am uh, I right on that? So you're. It's a one foot four inch. You're one foot four short. Hall. That's right. One foot four. One foot four, four. inch. Yeah, below counting the Magnolia Hall. Yeah, right. And that's kind of grade. Kind of to grade, which is what I mean. You've measured the grade for the mansion at thirty four right. nine, and you, so thirty one five for the house. From it. From the the. Uh, Right. Plus two foot for the grade. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And that right. shows up in that long streetscape. That's an actual grade okay. streetscape. <clears throat> okay. All right. Anything else? Let's go to number six. Lot number six. So a lot of the same comments. Um, we are 123 feet, so roughly the width of Magnolia okay. Hall, um, the, the, the full frontage. Um, and there were, we're one foot seven below Magnolia Hall in height. Uh, and then we're roughly 84% of the mass of Magnolia Hall. The vertical mass. That's right. So, excuse me. This house is wider in the front. This house is wider. And part yeah. of that is a perception based on the craftsman style. It's, <laughs> it's always a more horizontal style. We did uh, eliminate, if you remember, previously we had two gables or two uh, <coughs> extended porches. It's we eliminated the one on the right. Just didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, it, amount of detail. It just it's still simpler. I mean, that's yeah. yeah that's this what we is did. Good. That's the we, theme. We tried here. to make it. Th yeah, that's the theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I'm sorry. And this one is a little wider because the lot is wider. The lots do change size just a little bit as you go <coughs> along that streetscape. So this is one of the wider lots. But you'll see in the in the submittal, there's some 3D images that show depth wise that that width is is. Uh, alleviated a little bit by the depth on that. That's actually absolutely right. Okay. Um, Emily. So, um, we wanted to comment on, I know that we've discussed in the past this um, 
uh, I believe it's a faux kind of dormer. It's just kind of decorative. Um, and I know that it's been discussed in the past. Maybe it should be eliminated. I just wanted to bring that up and kind of get the commissioner's input on that. Um, additionally, the use of a door right here. Um, also wanted to get the commissioner's feedback on it. And then um, I just wanted to make the same comment about the guidelines and the ceiling height being 8 to 10 feet. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Susan. So um, is the siding shingled? Is that the intent? It's a shake siding, mostly stone material, but it's a shake siding. Okay. And then um, I think it works really well, um, and but I think the, the dormer is not a true dormer. It's just a... Yeah, so, That's right. so I would say to eliminate that, but overall, I think it works really well. Brian? So back to siding. It looks like I, in, in the rendition I have, it's stone on the bottom, the body. The body is stone with the columns and then shakes in, the, in that gable. That's is right. that correct? That's correct. Uh, the front entrance on, on that left side I think there's some precedent in Franklin for a, Door. for doors. Uh, one is on Church mm -hmm. Street, and they've got shorter windows on each side for side lights. So, I, you know, I, I think that works. The um, I think that the brackets, the brackets are a little out of proportion to the scale of the building. I think it reminds me more of a train station mm -hmm. than a residential craftsman or bungalow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Valid question. And um, if staff is saying the dormer is too small, you're suggesting removal? <coughs> um, it has just been mentioned in the past yes. that if it's decorative, then it probably should be, you know, removed if it doesn't serve a purpose. And so I just wanted to bring that up um, okay. while we're looking at this. Did y'all have any comments about the dormer? I, did I you? Did, you I said did, that said the dormer. Could, Yes, 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 yes. I, would, I would like to add that I did um, lower the incidence of dormers by 50%. <laughs> it's special. That, it, I do like the dormer, but if it's too small, then it looks odd. If it's too big, it looks odd. So. Um, I could go we tried it without it, and it just... Looks looked empty. A little empty. Yeah. And it's one of those subjective things. Um, I'm envisioning that um, that'd be a little attic space, like with old toys or something like that, and the grandchild could go up there and have a little window. Um, I will say that something that does add does add mm -hmm. to one. When you had the two, it was a little much. With the one, it kind of gives a little a nod to the Japanese influence and to some of the bungalow craftsman um, and you, you and even some of them had the little eyebrow just a little bit it could eyebrow be a little there. eyebrow too I, and I'm and, not suggesting and, and I that. think it is important to have the quirkiness <laughs> now we heard you old homes have and that yeah. that has been recorded yeah I'm just saying yeah. but uh, I, I've heard I think that it front tonight um, it, it does add add to it I think I believe in in in, in making each house special and, and we're you know we're fighting a it's sometimes it's a battle to make to make those special moments, you know, given today's methods and means of construction and, and everything. And what I love about the old homes is that you have a little little quirky thing mm -hmm. here and there. So I, I think there um, is a place for that. And so I try I look for opportunities for those moments. I was agreeing with you, Matt. By oh, the way, thank, thank you, thank you, Brian. I like Kathy, it. Kathy, do you have any? No, I like okay. I like the little dormer. Okay, I don't have anything. Yes. So let's move on to number eight. All right. Similar comments. Uh, again, we are 121 feet away in this house from the main um, hall, Magnolia Hall, and our uh, percentage is roughly 65% mass to Magnolia Hall. 
So uh, we've even been able to break down that mass even more on this one. We are one foot four below the height of Magnolia Hall. Um, and this is, um, again, a lot of mostly stone veneer uh, with some stu <coughs> stucco <coughs> uh, infill. And we're, our ceilings are 10 feet and 9 feet. <laughs> Okay, Emily, excuse me. You read my mind about just mentioning that. <laughs> um, there was one other comment. Um, it was on the rear elevation. It's kind of unique to have kind of a shed dormer and a gable. And so we kind of wanted to get the uh, commission's input on this as it is unique and it's not uh, commonly seen. And the, those are our comments. Uh, so I would, I would, I think, so are you thinking more of a gable roof dormer? Is that what you think would be more appropriate, Emily? Just pick one. Oh, just pick one? Yes, <laughs> I would say gable maybe. roof. And then the other thing that I'm struggling with is that the windows in the in the left bay, the triple windows are very tall, and it just seems like it's not corresponding to the the front entry. So um, I'm not sure quite how to handle that, but it just seems like the scale is just off there. But um, I, I have to commend you on the drawing. The you know this the. Uh, three-dimensional joint they're beautiful thank you, thank you. Yeah, man, I think you might want to comment on those windows but it, it would seem as though we've created a, a pretty special room there that we wanted some volume and um, you know how I mean architecture is all about compression and and explosion to create really unique places so I think the compression at the front door allows us the opportunity to have some explosion in that room with those taller windows and plus if you take those out it's sort of that uh, big forehead in between that's hard to you know to figure out how best to do that and not look <clears throat> awkward i don't know if you want to add anything and um i think overall i think it was um i think it is important for that space inside for those windows to be more expansive I might use the term rather than explosive, maybe expansive. <laughs> but, uh, um, but, uh, it's my old ammunition. <laughs> <that background. laughs> the old Marine coming my out. Old Marine coming out. Um, the, uh, <laughs> but, but we, we could take a look at that, a fresh look at that, just to verify the head heights of those windows and to, and to make sure that, that, um, you know that's the height that they should be but um yeah okay anything else i just wonder if you could do something with the door with the entry you know it just seems like the i mean i think the left bay is is aesthetically works well but it's something about the door if you could change the door maybe make the door a taller a taller door you know, mm -hmm. I think that might make all the difference. <clears throat> Is that possible? Absolutely. I mean, I think we we try to keep a lot of these closer to that seven foot with the transom above, which is what you see more often on historic homes. But maybe on this one, given the scale, we look at doing just a little bit taller of a yeah, door there. I think that might help, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Good idea. Yeah. Thanks. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No, I don't have any comments. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. I thought we'd be here till nine. Great job. Well, it's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving week. Yeah. Mike, yeah. It's, th it's Thanksgiving week, Mike. I'm, <clears throat> I'm tearing up right now as we speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> are, are we, great any other beautiful, discussion? Beautiful stuff. We're, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.